Do you remember a certain smell that reminds you of your childhood? Every time you come across it, you are taken back to a certain memory. For me, I can never forget the strong scent of freshly cut or shredded iron metal. I know it sounds weird, but hear me out. That is because in my childhood years, we would go to my grandparents' house during the summer holidays. And there was an iron metal factory at the basement of the house. All of my mom's siblings came there too, along with their kids. For about one month, it used to be madness with 10 of my cousins around. A lot of happy and joyful memories made during those years. Even after all these years, anytime I come across that specific scent, I'm transported back to the idyllic summer days filled with playing games with my cousins, water balloon fights, and drinking orange squash. This feeling isn't just one happy recollection, it's carried by a strong current of wistful longing for a time in the past. It's nostalgia. Nostalgia is powerful, it gets political leaders elected, it's at the core of billions of dollars of advertising and was once considered a medical disease. But what is nostalgia and what makes it so powerful? What's happening in our brains when we're feeling it and how does it influence our lives? Let's look at it today. Researchers are finding that nostalgia can be enormously beneficial and potentially life-saving emotion. Clay Rutledge, a psychological scientist, has spent much of his career studying what gives our lives meaning and has found that nostalgia plays an important role. He says, Nostalgia is one of the self-regulatory tools we use to remind ourselves that we matter. So what exactly is nostalgia? The simplest definition of nostalgia is people's reflection on their cherished memories, Rutledge explains. That varies from person to person, obviously, but there are some commonalities. Rutledge says nostalgic memories tend to have the following characteristics. A social component. Nostalgic memories typically involve family members, close friends, or romantic partners. Personal meaning. The memories might seem trivial to someone else, but because of the personal context, they're meaningful. They occurred fairly far in the past. In other words, you are unlikely to feel nostalgic about something that happened just yesterday, but you are likely to have a nostalgic memory or two from a decade ago. But what does nostalgia do to the brain? A 2016 study used fMRI imaging to monitor participants' brain activity when they were exposed to nostalgia-inducing stimuli. When nostalgia was triggered, Participants' brains showed activity in two powerful neural networks, the areas of the brain associated with memory and the brain's reward system. The more those systems worked cooperatively, the researchers found, the more nostalgia people felt. A very specific kind of memory is being activated during nostalgia, says Rutledge. Most of the time when you're nostalgic, it's autobiographical. You're accessing what we call self-revelant memories, he explains. Studies have shown that smells like my weird iron metal scent can be a specially powerful catalyst for nostalgic memories. For example, if you're hiking somewhere, you're smelling fresh air, dirt, and too many trees and plants to count. All of those scents are sorted and parsed in the body's olfactory bulb, which extends from your nose to the base of your brain. The olfactory bulb is directly connected to the amygdala, an area of the brain responsible for processing emotion and the hippocampus, an area of the brain associated with memory. Smells from childhood are particularly powerful in this respect because very often our first exposure to sense is in childhood. Our brains form particularly strong connection during this process in case recollection of the smell is important for survival. You see, during our evolutionary process, we relied on our smell to sense danger especially in the night time. Is nostalgia a positive or negative emotion? In the earliest days of nostalgia study, Rutledge says it was seen as simply as homesickness. This is where nostalgia gets its name. The word was coined by a Swiss medical student, Johannes Hofer. In his 1688 dissertation, in describing the anxieties of soldiers fighting away from home, he combined the Greek word for homecoming, nostos, with the word for pain, algos. There's a tinge of sadness or loss, because you know you can't have that exact thing again. 
but what would someone find an old school Game Boy or the opening credits of their favorite childhood TV show? And you'll likely find them smiling. Personally, for me, the Pokemon theme song does the job. While homesickness is pure ache, nostalgia is a unique mix of ache and pleasure. We call this an emotionally ambivalent motion, which means it has its complex ride as positive features and negative features, Rutledge explains. There's a tinge of sadness or loss because you know you can't have that exact thing again, or someone in that memory is no longer alive. But that sadness comes with and is often overwhelmed by positivity. That positivity is what can make nostalgia such a useful emotion. You can either cherish the memory or be sad about it. Nostalgia as Motivation and Meaning Rutledge and his nostalgia studying colleagues have found that nostalgia is actually used to help self-regulate stress signals in the brain. Rutledge speculates, likely what the soldiers were doing when Hofer observed them and coined the term, the soldiers were stressed and homesick and afraid, and revisiting cherished memories from home was a way to cope with that stress. His own research supports this theory. We've seen that nostalgia seems to bring online these motivational or self-regulatory processes in the brain that help us downregulate or mitigate psychological threats, says Rutledge. Research suggests the social aspect of nostalgia motivates us to engage in pro-social behavior. Nostalgia makes us realize the importance of relationships and in turn motivates us to connect with friends and pursue romantic relationships. It's also strongly associated with optimism and resiliency. Nostalgia is a resource that people use to move forward, says Rutledge. We saw all of these aspects of nostalgia play out during the pandemic. You probably found yourself watching old movies or listening to old music. When we were in lockdown, we all felt nostalgic for the before times when we could see in person our family and friends. Those feelings were triggered by loneliness and a stressful situation, but they were also motivating, propelling us to believe that if we could just make it through, the reward of those in-person visits would be worth the wait. The next time you find yourself daydreaming about that summer when you were a kid or Christmas morning at your grandmother's house, know that the swirling mix of comfort and longing is doing something important. It's helping you understand what you want and motivating you to get there. you found this video interesting and informative. I will be delivering further self-improvement, motivational and interesting content on this channel. So subscribe not to miss out. If you like my content, please like, share and comment. Thank you for watching.